Welcome to this OST2 lecture about how to enable parameter encryption when using the Wolf TPM TSS library. So how this looks when using the Wolf TPM step. First, we need to create a primary key because this primary key will be used to create the shared secret required for the TPM session in order to enable parameter encryption. And we'll talk about this more in a moment. Then we need to make sure that our session is an HMAC type and we have set the proper attributes. We just mentioned them, but I'll repeat them because they're important. We have continue session, decrypt, and encrypt. Once this is done, we can execute the next TPM command and have the protection against machine in the middle attacks enabled. Once all of our operations with the TPM are done, the same way we would flush and unload the TPM loaded objects, because as you remember, we have a limited key slots, we will also flush the TPM session. How this workflow looks with an API. Same as in our previous lecture, we are using the rich API of Wolf TPM called wrappers. We already learned about the Wolf TPM to create primary key wrapper API in lecture J. Today we'll learn about Wolf TPM to start session and Wolf TPM set out session. The first one creates the new TPM session and the second helps us set the proper attributes to enable parameter encryption. The last API that you're probably already familiar with is the Wolf TPM to unload handle that just takes an index of a valid TPM index and flushes the TPM object. On the left side here, we have the prototype of the Wolf TPM to start session. And on the right side, I added extra information about why we use a primary key when creating the HMAC session for parameter encryption. There are two main categories, salted session and bound session. And depending on that, we have the four variations listed here on the slide. By default, the TPM2 tools we used in lecture G create salted and bound session if we provide a key context when starting a new TPM session. When using API, the choice is ours. Shall we create salted and bound session? Or shall it be just salted session? The creation of salted and bound session is responsibility for the stack. There is a lot of computation going behind the scenes into creating the session key, using the key derivation functions and so on. It is not the responsibility of the application developer to know these inner workings. Here, it is important to know that depending on how we provide entropy to the TSS to generate the session key, this defines the strength of our parameter encryption. Highest strength comes from a salted and bound session. At the same time, salted session is my preference because it already provides high guarantees coming from the entropy from an object already created inside the TPM. We use the loaded primary asymmetric key to feed entropy to generate the session key. This is very secure and allows mitigation against machine in the middle attacks. In the Wolf TPM 2 start session prototype, there is an interesting parameter at the end, encrypt decrypt algorithm. This parameter specifies the algorithm for parameter encryption. This is a topic we did not cover previously because again, TPM2 tools make it really straightforward to enable parameter encryption. Now that we're going to be developers using a TSS API, we need to know the two variations, either EAS-CFB or XOR. Notice that if we don't provide either, if we use no in this parameter, parameter encryption cannot be enabled for this TPM session. Let's take a closer look at how we typically use this wrapper API. First, we need to provide the current Wolf TPM device context. This is something we usually create at the start of our program when we call the Wolf TPM2 init API that we covered in the previous lecture, lecture J and its labs. Then we need naturally to provide an empty variable of time Wolf TPM2 session to store the newly created TPM session. Then in place of the TPM key parameter, we specify a primary object that is loaded into the TPM to add salt to the creation of this session. In this case, we chose a salted session. Therefore, we specify no in place of the bind parameter. In case we want salted and bound session, then we can use the index handle for the loaded primary object here. I have just chosen for our parameter encryption use case to use salted session, salted unbound session. Last but not least, we need to specify a parameter for parameter encryption. And this can be eas -CFB or XOR. It is important to know that using eas -CFB requires more computation on the stack, but it offers much stronger encryption compared to XOR. Now, 
there's an important point here about index. Index specifies a slot in the authorization area of a TPM command. And we have not talked a lot about authorization areas because this requires us to dig deeper into how TPM commands are constructed, the architecture of TPM commands, which can get quite complex. I'll talk about it to give you the idea and understanding of what an authorization area is. Just remember that usually TPM sessions are placed at the very beginning at index zero. And then later the Wolf TPM stack handles that when we add authorization, password authorization or something else, it knows, recognizes there's already a session at index zero, I'll place everything else afterwards. Would that be session one? Uh, would that be slot one or slot two? The TPM comments have mandatory fields. Like for example, the TPM tag, the comment size and the comment code. The comment code is just a numerical expression of the TPM command. So the TPM knows which command to execute. For us, they come in a human readable form if it's an API or a TPM 2.2, but for the TPM, it's like an opcode. It's just a numeric expression of the TPM command. So where comes the authorization area? Well, the authorization area comes right after, but it's optional. It depends on the TPM tag. As you can see, it's already getting complicated and you don't need to know all of this when you're using a TSS API. This is why I said this is not really an information for the application developer. This is usually something that software stack developer would know or would really get deep into. So this authorization area has up to three slots. This is the place where we provide policy authorization, password authorization, or the sessions for auditing and parameter encryption. How do we use these slots? It's up to us. Of course, we need to satisfy the TPM requirements. For example, if we have created a key with password authorization, we need to provide a slot this password authorization. Then if we want to protect against machine in the middle attacks, okay, we need to use the second slot to set HMAC session with parameter encryption attributes set and so on and so on. The good thing is that Wolf TPM takes care of the management of this, at least most of it. As you saw, set out session allows us to say where to place this session. And usually we choose the first slot or slot zero because we count from zero to two in this case. When we set the authorization using the other wrapper APIs, Wolf TPM will automatically detect, okay, there's already a session, there's already information in slot zero. So I'll use the next available slot, slot one. And if there's information in slot one, it will use the information in slot two. There's a lot of Wolf TPM2 set out wrappers that you can check in the documentation of the stack to get a better sense of how Wolf TPM manages the different out slots and options. To perform the labs associated with this lecture, I would recommend using the outcome of the previous lab because we already entered into using the Wolf TPM API and we'd be just upgrading and modifying that to fulfill the exercises for this lecture. Of course, if you have difficulty, you can always check the available solutions at our code repo in GitLab.